Hey there guys, it's been a while, and welcome to my review of all the new cards from the first expansion of Hearthstone Goblins vs Gnomes. Real quick before I begin, I want to address why I haven't put out any videos in a long time, and I do apologize. Uh, some real life responsibilities have been creeping up, and I have had to take some time or I've had to take some time off to take care of things, but I do hope to be putting out videos again soon and streaming on a fairly regular basis. I'll talk more about those announcements and future plans in another video for now, but let's talk about Hearthstone. I've been playing Hearthstone, the wildly successful World of Warcraft online card game or whatever you want to call it since beta of last year, and haven't really made a single video on it yet. I wanted to review these cards for a few reasons, but primarily so that people can get familiar with the new expansion if they aren't already, uh, maybe get some more information about some of the cards, or just want to discuss or theory craft their viability in the early stages. Um, also, I think it would be cool to look back on this review sometime in the future and see how far off or how close my opinion was of the cards. Finally, while the expansion has been out for about a week now, I think, um, I haven't played with these cards very much at all, so my opinion still could be very far off. With Goblins vs Gnome expansion, the development team decided to put out 120 new cards, and there are some, are some token cards as well, some buff cards or some cards that can only be summoned or activated by other cards, but there are 120 collectible cards, I should say, and uh, I'm going to go in order of mana cost and then by rarity, so for example, a 1 mana common, 1 mana epic, 1 mana legendary, and then to 2 manas and so on, and then uh, also after that I'm going to do class cards. So class cards are going to be at the very, very end. So let's go ahead and start with the target dummy. The target dummy is a 0 mana, 0 2. Now, the first thing I needed to discuss with you guys is the new card type mech. Um, just like the previous existing, there are some card types in the game like pirates, demons, um, dragons, I think, you know, some other types like that, but the most famous one being beast, of course, which Hunter has a lot of abilities to interact with beast. Warlock has some with demons. But mostly beasts are what was known. With this expansion, mech's definitely going to be a huge uh, card type. And you definitely have to look out for that. So it's almost always an advantage when you see a mech card on your side. Um, I don't think there's any disadvantage to having a mech card. Like, I don't think that your opponent, off the top of my head, I don't think there are any cards that your opponent can play that will take advantage of you having mechs. So some detrimental, detrimental effects. But the target dummy is a 0-2... Uh, mech and has taunt. It's a rare identified by the blue little gym there and um, I'm gonna talk about two things too as I go through these cards I want to let you know I'm gonna talk about arena first and then we're gonna talk about constructed so in arena this card sucks It's just like wisp where it's zero mana you get zero two stats So yeah, you're like, okay, that's not bad stats for zero mana But you know would you play a one mana shield bear which is a zero four taunt and the answer is no because These cards suck and the only reason you take them if there's nothing better, but honestly, I think Almost every other rare in the game would be better than this. In Constructed, it's meant to be played in fast, really aggressive mech decks where playing a mech is going to be advantageous to you. So it'll buff one of your creatures or something like that. Um, but honestly, I think there are a lot better options out there. Uh, the next one is another mech, Clockwork Gnome, and it has Death Rattle out of spare part card to your hand. Okay, so we're breaking into a lot of new themes and concepts right away. Um, this stats is comparable to a Lepernome or an Abusive Sergeant uh, for 1 mana for a 2-1, which is good. It's also a mech, so that's really good too. And the Death Rattle's fairly nice. So the spare part cards, okay, so what are they? Um, they, when you play them, or when you get them in your hand, either by a minion dying, or there's some minions that you get a spare part card when a minion takes damage, or when you put it into the field of play, but they're basically buff cards, all for 1 mana, and they're going to do small buffs. They either are going to do essentially half or around half of what like an actual card would do. Um, like, uh, for example, Armor Plating will give your minion one health. Um, the Priest card, Powered Shield, will give your minion two health and draw a card for one mana. So obviously, Armor Plating's not as good as that. Strictly not as good as that. Uh, but these are kind of freebie cards, right? So they're never going to be as good. And you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't play them as such. So there's Armor Plating, which is give one minion one health, and we can compare that to, as I said, Powered Shield. Uh, freeze a minion, which could be compared to Frost Shock, maybe, or Ice Lance. Um, actually, I would say more like Ice Lance, because uh, Frost Shock does one damage. Give a friendly minion stealth until your next turn, kind of like Conceal, except only one minion, instead of all your minions. Reversing Switch, which is like the Crazed Alchemist Battle Cry effect. Um, give a minion Taunt. You know, a, a lot of minions give adjacent minions Taunt or something like that. Or you can cast Buffs, it'll give your minions Taunt. Um, time Rewinder, return a friendly minion to your hand, which is kind of like a panda's effect. Like one of the panda's uh, cards that when you play them, you know, it returns a friendly minion to your hand. 
Um, Whirling Blades give your mini one attack, which I guess is just like a half of a uncomboed Cold Blood, or it's well actually you can compare it to that Paladin card, which gives you a minion three attack for one mana. Since these cards are random, it's really hard to evaluate them. The cards you'll need will be different every situation where you play something, so you can't rely on them, and it's kind of just a bonus effect. Probably my favorite is Reversing Switch because I find that effect actually way more useful than people give it credit for. In Arena, this card is okay. It's a really aggressive pick, but it's just you gotta think of it just like a um, Leper Gnome, and that you really only pick it if you really want early game and you're really playing an aggressive deck. If you're playing anything mid game ish or late game, uh, I would generally stay away from it because you can easily kill it with a hero power since it has one health from three of the classes. Um, Druid, Rogue, and Mage, and it just dies to pretty much everything in the entire game. Next up we have a 1 mana 1-2 one, Cogmaster, and he has 2 attack while you have a mech. Um, so there isn't really anything special about this card, it's pretty straightforward. You play it, you have a 1-2, if you have a mech it becomes a 3-2. It doesn't get 2 attack for each mech you play, just only the 2 attack in general for, for if you have a single mech out on board or more. So... Um, as it is, it's a 1 mana 1 2, which is for 1 mana, like the best thing you can play for 1 mana is a Zombie Chow that's a neutral card, which is a 1 mana 2 3, or a, um, if you're a Warlock, a Flame Imp, which is a 1 mana 3 2. Now, both of those cards have slight downsides to them, and this card doesn't really because it's already a 1 2. Um, even if you're able to get the buff, though, up to be making it a 3 2 it's still just okay so in arena this card is way too hard to combo with having mechs and making it reliable because if it's a 1-2 it really sucks um, and in constructed this would be maybe played I think in um, mech type decks but honestly I, I really think there are better options unless you're playing a pure pure like hardcore mech deck um, and really want that early aggression and can fairly reliably always make it a 3-2 and even a 1 mana for a 3-2, as I said, is comparable to other things already. So, it, it, it's, I think, worse than Flame Imp. But, you know, not every class gets access to Flame Imp. So, um, next up we have, we're into the 2 mana neutral creatures. And we have Stone Splinter Trog. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain 1 attack. And it's a 2-3. Now, you're going to start seeing certain cards that have parallel effects as they go up the board. In other words, there's going to be a card like this for 4 mana, and there's also going to be a card like this that's a legendary. And the same goes for some other cards too. So in other words, they're going to have the same effects, but be they're going to cost more mana but have better stats. So whenever your opponent casts a spell gaining 1 attack effect, you're going to see again. And it's actually fairly useful. However, for a 2 mana 2-3, two, probably the worst of out of all of them because this trades with like 90% of the minions in the game so it's not that hard to get rid of without a spell you know what I mean it's not very often that you need to get rid of minions with spells that are two threes so it's a fairly decent two drop you know its stats are par kind of like par for what you want for a two drop um, two three or three two I'd say two three is not as good but you know it can get one attack it can potentially be a three three even better maybe if they really have to and it's good if you can play this early because it prevents your opponent from using the coin sometimes because uh, they don't want to buff it up to a 3-3. Three, three. And remember, the coin is a spell. So I would say a average or slightly above average 2-drop, but often there are much better things out there in Arena. And in Constructed, I probably wouldn't play this because there's just way too many better 2-drops. Now, next up, we have a Mech Warper, um, and it's a, another 2-mana two 2-3, two, but this one's effect is much better, I think. Your mechs cost one less, and it is a mech itself. This effect in Arena, once again, is not that useful because it's really hard to get what you want since arena's random picks and get designing a mech deck can be very difficult and probably not reliable and not a smart thing to do in general so you wouldn't pick this unless you had a lot of mechs or just needed a two mana two three and constructed though in mech decks this is card is really good i see it quite a bit in the little bit i've played in like hardcore rush mech decks because if you play one of these or two of these, you know, your mechs cost one or two less, and a lot of the mechs that are played are kind of in the early to mid game phase, like from anywhere from one to four, even five mana ish. No, not too many that are greater than that, 
So you can start pumping out, you know, four mana minions or three mana minions for significantly less, and you can keep that tempo and really snowball the victory hard. Uh, so these cards are really nice if you're playing mech decks and the opponent can remove them fairly quickly. Alright, so next up we have a ship's cannon, and it is a 2 mana, 2 3. Whenever you summon a pirate, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. So, pirates, as I mentioned previously, was a type that came out in the general release of the game. And uh, people tried playing pirate decks, and right away they were fairly successful, but people then realized, of course, you know, there are much better decks out there, and pirate decks didn't really see much play. Pirate decks do center around weapons, um, so it's almost exclusively played with warriors or rogues but some other classes do play certain pirates on occasion. And um, this one is kind of trying to revive maybe the pirate pirate class as a viable option. Um, and it's a, fa it's a fairly strong effect, honestly. A, a two mana, two, three, as we talked about, once again, is good stats. Actually, I think the highest mana pirate is maybe Captain Greenscreen or Salty Dog, which is like five or six mana. So nothing, nothing even in um, the late game ish. And that means that the pirates you're going to play are going to be generally like one, two, three mana, maybe even four mana. And you can play a lot of them. You know, so if you can set up two ship's cannons, maybe even one ship cannon, and you play a few pirates, you know, you have like a knife juggler but on steroids effect, right? And uh, it's pretty fun. I've seen this played a few times. I've people, seen people try pirate decks. Honestly, I don't know if that's actually going to be a very good type of deck, but it looks really fun. So if you're into more having fun and being having an entertaining deck, and you can build a pirate deck, I would totally be down for it. Uh, but as for a like a reliable, constructed deck, I don't think it's that great. And in um, Arena, it's a little too hard, once again, to combo the uh, effect. So it's mostly just a 2-mana two 2-3. Two, Next up is a 2-mana two 1-2 one two mech called the Noitron with Taunt Divine Shield. This mech is, as its name says, annoying. I've heard its battle cry, and it just is like, hello, 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 or something. I don't know. But it's really annoying, and um, as a card, it's kind of annoying, right? They give it Divine Shield and Taunt, so it's it's actually, I'd say, a fair card. Um, I wouldn't say it's, like, great or anything, because at the end of the day, two mana cards, it's really hard for them to be great. Um, you really need some exceptional effects, because they just get outclassed by mid to late game. Um, and I think this card is nice because... Even though it doesn't have the stats, it essentially blocks the enemy or the opponent from attacking your other creatures. So it's kind of like a defensive card. Well, it actually is a defensive card. You you can play like, you know, maybe a mech warper, right? Which reduces your mechs by one mana. And then you can play this for one mana. And it'll protect your mech warper, hopefully, unless you you know the opponent has a spell or something, from minions for two turns. And uh, that's really nice. In the few games of Arena that I did play, this card did actually prove to be quite annoying because it was mostly used in the mid to late game to block me from attacking other um, their other creatures, and eh, a fair card. Next up is a 2-mana 3-2 Murloc called Puddle Stomper, and this guy is buff. Look at him. He looks mean. He's a mean Murloc. Um, and this thing is almost directly comparable to the Bloodfin Raptor, which is also a 2-mana 3-2, but a beast. Um, and you can ask yourself in Arena, if you pick the Bloodfin Raptor, would you pick this? And a lot of times you say yes. Obviously, it's probably not an ideal card to pick, but sometimes you really need two drops, because if you don't have any, you get the game will get too far away from you, and you'll just lose. So if it gets to the words in your draft, you don't have anything, you know, you can take this. This is probably better than the Bloodfin Raptor in almost every case, unless you're a hunter, because of the beast type, and actually something we'll get to later, unless you're a druid, because druids also have something that interacts off having beasts. Uh, otherwise, there are a few Murloc effects that affect all Murlocs on the board, that buff all Murlocs on the board. So, um, for example, the one that gives all Murlocs one attack, the the Murloc Red Leader, which gives all Murlocs like plus two, plus two, or something, something like that. Um, so this will buff this up too as well. So they can't play those if they have them, or they if they do, they risk buffing your creature. Also, the only downside, though, there is a downside, is that Hungry Crab does destroy Murlocs. But how often do you run into Hungry Crab in Arena? Hopefully, your opponent isn't playing Hunter and has a Web Spinner and then gets the Hungry Crab out of that, because that would be the worst. But uh, otherwise, fairly decent card. 
Next up we have a 2 mana 2 3 Gilblin Stalker. I hope I'm saying that right. It's pretty much vanilla except for the stealth. And the stealth is nice um, because it lets you pretty much get this card out and protect it. There's almost nothing, if you play this early on in the game, there's almost nothing that can remove it that turn that you play it. You know, AoEs don't do 3 mana, 3 damage this early on, um, which is nice. So some people like to think as, as a 2 mana 2 3 charger that you play the previous turn. And I guess that's one way to think of it, but that seems really complicated. I don't know why you wouldn't just say it's a 2-mana two 2-3 two, with stealth. <laughs> that In my head, that makes way more sense than the 2-mana two 2-3 two, charger that you play the previous turn. So, yeah, it's a fairly nice card um, in Arena. And like in Constructed, there's just much better options out there, as we talked about. Next up, we have a 2-mana two 1-2 one, two mech, the Micro Machine. At the start of each turn, gain one attack. So this card is pretty strong in both Arena and Constructed. At Arena, what you might run into is players not having answers early on, um, because a lot of players run mid to late game decks in Arena that are control based and board control based. It's really hard to build an aggressive deck reliably, and if you do, you can easily get, you can easily burn out and not kill the other player, and then they'll just stabilize and kill you fairly quickly. Um, so more reliably, people build control decks, and in control decks, you generally have mid to late game minions so a lot of times in your starting hand you'll be missing two even three drops sometimes and i'm sure you guys know that feeling if you play well you have to wait till turn four well if you play this early on especially if you coin it out this thing's going to have a lot of attack by turn four so let's put it that way um so it's a good card because even if it like let's say even if it doesn't get the dream of going to four, turn four or five and gaining a billion attack you play this, and at the end of your turn, it's a 2-2, two -two because it gains one attack at the end of each turn. Or at the start of your opponent's turn, it's a 2-2. Two -two. And at the start of your turn back, again, it's a 3-2. So it's almost always a 2-mana 3-2, unless they already have something out, then it's a 2-mana 2-2. Two -two. But it's also a mech again, so it does gain those effects. This card, I think, is almost always a fair card, and sometimes a great card. So if you want to average it out, it's a above average card in almost every situation. Um, and in Constructed, this is like really, really good in mech decks because of what I said. Next up, we have a 2 mana 1-1 one, one Explosive Sheep, which is a mech. Do deal 2 damage to all minions. I really like this card because it adds board clears and early fun techy stuff and situational uh, you know, times you can use this to classes that don't have uh, AoE. You can play this on turn 2, and you can think of it like that Nox card, Unstable Ghoul, I think it's called, that deals 1 damage to all minions. This kind of has that effect, but doubled. And it's really good early on if you have, like, nothing to do. You can't play anything. You can use this card to board clear because unless he has a silence, a polymorph, or something, you know, like that, then they can't. This is going to deal two damage to everything, no matter what. You play it, and if they kill it, okay, sure, they take two damage to all our minions. If they don't, you can run into something, deal one damage, and two damage to everything. So it's a really nice card. The, the people that see this card always think that, um,. Druids or mages, more so mages, can have a four mana consecration. Um, you know, a mage can play this and then use the hero power to have uh, a four mana consecration, but it can also damage your own stuff, so you have to watch out for that. And the same thing goes for uh, druids with wrath. Oh, and it is a mech too, but the thing is, I don't really know if you'd play this with other mech stuff. So, because a lot of the mech stuff it has, you know, low health, so you'd end up wiping out a lot of your own minions you know it doesn't have a lot of attack it's mostly used as a board clear places you'd use it in arena it's good in constructed it's fairly decent anti-aggression so good in both and finally in the epic slot we have the two mana three two recombobulator and boy this card is sure as epic indeed it's battle cry is transform a friendly minion into a random minion with the same cost and he has the most epic mustache i've ever seen i swear to god um there's a lot to talk about. I could talk about this card for like 10 minutes straight. I won't. I'll try to keep it short. Um, first, talk about Arena. And if you guys are a little bit confused about what the battle cry means, the dream is like you play a minion, like a Yeti, and you trade, and then the Yeti's still alive, has like one health. It's like a 4 1 or something. Then you can recombobulate that Yeti into another 4 mana minion, and it'll be back at full health, whatever that 4 mana, four mana minion is. Now, obviously, it's random, so you can get something really bad like a Defender of Argus for 4 mana, or you could get something really good like another Yeti, or even a Legendary. Uh, so it, it is a random effect, but you can control the randomness. You can use it after you've already utilized an important battle cry, got rid of a Divine Shield on a minion, you know, something like that, so that even if you get like the worst case scenario in terms of stats on a minion, 
um, you're still getting some better than what you would have had normally. Um, and that's like the worst case. The best case scenario is, of course, you can change, you know, your, you, you play an ogre, you can change your ogre, your 6-7 ogre into like a legendary. And that happens actually quite a bit because, as you'll notice, with mana costs, the higher up you get, especially past 5 mana, the ratio of non-legendaries to legendary goes up significantly. And once you get into like 7, 8, 9 mana range, it's probably more likely to get a legendary than not. Um, so if possible, you know, you want to save this for higher, um, more expensive minions. But... You know, you don't need to. You don't need to hold on to it just to get that dream because it's still a good card regardless. In Constructed, this card's even better. Um, and if you weren't sure, it was pretty much a must pick in Arena. It's like God tier up there. Um, you know, in the Epic slot, there's like Big Game Hunter, this recombobulated card. There's a few others in Arena. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you see this, pretty much I'll, I'll pick it almost every time unless it's a really, really tough pick. Um, but yeah, in Constructed, it's even better. Uh, because when you're running, you would run this in a control deck, you'd not run this in aggro deck. In a control deck, you generally lean towards higher mana minions, so you can then, like I said, free combobulate them after you've used them to get legendaries if you uh, from cards that aren't legendaries, or if you use a legendary that has like uh, a really important battle cry like Black Knight or Oxdraza or I don't know, some other ones, um, then you can recombobulate it and get hopefully a better minion um this card on priest is like the best thing ever i'm not totally familiar but i believe you can shadow madness a minion and then recombobulate it and it won't give it back similar in the way that you could you could shadow madness a minion before and trigger its death rattle and it won't give the death rattle part back right so um you could steal a uh, sludge belcher with shadow madness recombobulate it and this is a total of six mana, of course. Steal Sludge Belcher, get rid of it, and you get a five mana minion, which could potentially be something really good. Um, so it's a really, really, really good card in, in uh, constructed and in arena. And probably the best is gonna it, you're gonna find it on is Priest, and um, I'm sure a lot of decks will be built around, if not around it, at least definitely built to incorporate it into their uh, playstyle and into their decks so uh superb card top five top ten type card and um the uses are limitless with this card